What size power wire do I need? What kind of power wire should I use? Watch this video to find out. I've been participating in this hobby for several years now. I'm very active in various forums and Facebook groups and in the comments on YouTube. And this one thing just keeps popping up over and over and over again. And that is, what size power wire should I use? And should I use OFC or CCA? OFC stands for oxygen free copper. Now this is copper that's had the oxygen removed so that it doesn't corrode. So you're gonna be looking at say a 99.99% pure copper wire. Whereas CCA stands for copper clad aluminum. And this is aluminum wire that has a copper coating on the outside of it. In order to figure that out, you've gotta do some math. Most people hate math. I love math. I'm gonna do the math for you. Later on in the video, I'm gonna give you a tool that you can use to figure out what size wire gauge you need and which type of wire you should be using. So stay tuned for instructions on how to use this tool and how to access this tool. So I did a ton of research for this video and if you want to go through all the gory details, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be glad to make a longer video that goes over this spreadsheet and all these numbers in great detail. But there are two main things that I want you to know. The first thing is, it turns out there are different grades of CCA wire available on the marketplace. And I've never seen car audio power wire that labeled or graded that CCA. So that makes me a little bit leery about CCA because I have no idea about the quality of the CCA that I'm getting. I found resistance numbers for 15% copper CCA and 10% copper CCA. I went with 15% CCA in order to give the CCA wire kind of the benefit of the doubt. The second thing that I wanna point out to you is highlighted here in bold on the spreadsheet. And this 15% CCA has 55% more internal resistance relative to the oxygen free copper. So that tells you a whole lot. There's more resistance in the CCA. So why in the world do people use CCA at all? Well, because CCA is a lot less expensive than oxygen free copper. Copper is a very expensive metal and for good reason because it's really good stuff. Next, I'm gonna show the calculator that I created that you can use to figure out what type and size wire you can use. Keep in mind that a lot of experienced car audio hobbyists and professionals still only recommend that you use OFC wire. This is because CCA is more likely to corrode in your car. So I'm gonna share this with you so that you can use it and you can do the calculations for your own specific situation. If you want access to the calculator, you need to do two things. One, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and two, shoot an email to the address down in the video description with the word wire in the subject line. So here's the calculator. I'm gonna show you real quick how to use it. Everything that's in gray is something that you can change for your own particular situation for your car and your install. Everything that's in green is a result that you're gonna to wanna to look at. Green means good, green means go. If everything's green, you're all set. You've chosen an appropriate wire for the situation. Things that aren't color coded are just results that are on the screen just for your information. Now you can open up this spreadsheet in Google Sheets. You can open up this spreadsheet on your phone using a smartphone app. You don't have to have a full blown version of Microsoft Excel in order to open up this spreadsheet. So don't be afraid to go ahead and subscribe and shoot me that email so I can share this calculator with you. The first thing we do is we plug in our amplifier efficiency. The most important thing to note is you have to use a realistic number for your amplifier efficiency. I've never seen an amplifier at more than 80% efficient. It was an audio control amplifier that Big D Wiz from Williston Audio Labs tested. Typically, we're gonna estimate that a Class D amplifier is 75% efficient, but there are a ton of Class D amplifiers out there that simply are not 75% efficient. So if you're using a cheap amplifier, don't use 75, use 70. Now, Class A, B amplifiers are supposed to be 65% efficient, but not all amplifiers are built the same. Some are gonna be less efficient, some are gonna be more. Whenever I'm doing a class AB amplifier, I like to err on the side of caution and use like 60%. And if you're using a cheap amplifier or an old amplifier, maybe use 50%. The main thing is you're gonna to wanna to use a realistic number right there for your power efficiency. I'm gonna go with 75% in this case. Next, you're gonna put in the voltage for your charging system. Again, you're gonna to wanna to use a realistic number. 
Cars run on a 12 volt system, but they're not actually 12 volts. Most cars are actually gonna run much higher than 12 volts while the engine is on. So while the alternator is spinning, a good healthy charging system is probably gonna give you 14.4 volts. If you're doing competition car audio, you're gonna have a beefed up system that might give you 16 volts. And the voltage makes a huge difference. Now, if you're sitting still with the engine off playing the radio, you might only have 12. Now, if your voltage drops below 12 volts, gets down to the 10 volt or 9 volt range, you're going to start having some major problems. You don't want that to happen. So always keep your voltage up. And if you're going to install like a really powerful aftermarket system, you're going to want an extra battery and you're going to want an upgraded alternator so you can maintain a solid 14.4 volts while you're pumping out music. I'm going to leave it at 13.8 because that's a realistic number. Finally, power. 500 watts is the number I'm going to go with for an example, but I can change it to 1,000. I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to type in 1,000 in that blank. Whoops, not 100, 1,000. And as you see, I'm going to draw 96.6 amps of current whenever I'm pulling 1,000 watts through this wire. The next thing is the wire length. Use a realistic wire length for your car and don't forget to include the length of the ground wire. So if you've got 14 feet of power wire and two feet of ground wire, you want this to be 16. Now two feet is a pretty long ground wire. You want to keep your ground wire as short as possible. So keep that in mind. The next thing is the wire type, oxygen free copper, or there's a drop down menu and you can choose either CCA or OFC, whichever one you want to pick. And finally the wire size. You can choose either 8, 4, or 0 gauge wire because those are the most common wires sold as car audio wire. You can also use 2 gauge wire or 6 gauge wire. And if you want to see the numbers for those, just let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the calculator. Let's go with 4 gauge wire. And what we see is that this 4 gauge wire is going to have a resistance of 0.25 ohms per 1000 feet. And as a result, I'm going to have 0.386 volts of voltage drop at the amplifier the magic number is 0.5. We want to keep that below 0.5. If the voltage drop is more than half of a volt, then you're going to be able to hear the difference in your stereo. So we want to keep our voltage up. We're going to lose 0.386 volts. That's tolerable. The next number is circular mils per amp. Circular mils is an measure of the area of the cross section of the wire. And in order to keep the heat down in the wire, you want to keep this number right here above 300. So we want more than 300 circular mils per amp. Let me show you what I mean here. If we change the wire size to eight, we have 171 circular mils per amp, and we're gonna drop almost an entire volt. So that tells us that that eight gauge wire isn't big enough. Now you might think an eight gauge wire is big enough for a short run. So why don't we move this to a, a one foot run of wire? But look at the circular mills. The circular mills didn't change. So if you're trying to run a thousand watts through a one foot run of eight gauge wire, not a good idea. You're going to be pulling 96.6 amps, not going to work because the circular mills is too large and that little wire is going to heat up. When a wire heats up, its internal resistance increases. And well, you're going to get fires. You're going to blow fuses. I hope you blow a fuse. Things start to go bad in a hurry. Let's look at a couple other examples. Let's say that I had a class AB amplifier that was only 60% efficient, but I had a healthy charging system of 14.4 volts and I was running um, 1400 watts of total power. Well, that is going to draw 162 amps. So my main power wire needs to be able to handle 162 amps. And let's say it's going to be a nice healthy run of wire of 16 feet and I want to use four gauge wire. And there we see, four gauge wire isn't going to do the job. I'm going to need a lot bigger wire or I'm going to need a more efficient amplifier. So if my efficiency were 80%, you can see that it's going to work just fine. So the amplifier efficiency is very important. It's all kind of tied together. Let's imagine we have a 60% efficiency amplifier and we've got a 20 feet run of zero gauge wire. Well, that's going to work just fine. Both our readouts are in green. What happens if we switch it to CCA wire? Well, look at that, y'all. 0.499. So it's going to be right on the edge of our limit for CCA wire. And honestly, if it's that close, I'm saying no deal because of all the other downsides that go with CCA wire. 
And that's how this calculator works. If you want a copy of this spreadsheet, make sure you hit subscribe and then send me an email on the email address down in the description with a subject heading wire and I'll send you a copy of this spreadsheet. If you like this video, here are some others that you might like to watch.